Good day, Grade 8 learners! We are now in quarter for week 3 of Grade 8 Mathematics, and it is entitled Proving Inequalities in a Triangle. So our objective for today's video is all about on how to prove inequalities in a triangle. We will come up in different theorem, and we will gonna prove those theorem. Now, are you ready? If you're ready, let us now start. The first theorem is Triangle Inequality Theorem 1 and states that if one side of a triangle is longer than a second side, then the angle opposite the first side is larger than the angle opposite the second. Now let us now try to prove Triangle Inequality Theorem number 1 by proving the measurement of angle LMN is greater than the measurement of the angle LNM. So given the triangle LMN which is on the right side and LN is greater than LM. Now there is a need to make additional construction to prove that the measure of angle LMN is greater than the angle or the measure of angle LNM. So with a compass, we will gonna point on L and with the radius LM, mark a point P on the LN and connect M and P with a line segment to form a triangle. So it looks like this. There you go. Now let us now prove. How do you describe the relationship between LM and LP? Yes, LM is congruent to LP. Then based on the statement number one, what kind of a triangle is triangle LMP? Yes, it's an isosceles triangle. And since it is an isosceles triangle, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. The base angles of isosceles triangles are congruent. Now, study the illustration and write a statement about angle LMN if the reason is the one given. So, angle LMN is congruent to angle 1 plus angle 2. So based on statement number 4, write an inequality statement focusing on angle 1. Yes, angle LMN is greater than angle 1 by property of inequality. And using statement number 3 and statement number 5, measurement of angle LMN is also greater than angle 2 by substitution property. And study the illustration and write an operation statement involving angle MPN, angle N, and angle 3. Yes, if we combine angle MPN plus angle N plus angle 3, that is equal to 180 because the sum of the measure of interior angle of a triangle is 180 degrees. And study the illustration and write an operation statement involving angle 2 and angle MPN. Yes, angle 2 plus angle MPN that is equal to 180 degrees because they are linear pair. Now, what property supports the step wherein we replace the right side of statement 8 with its equivalent in statement 7? So, by substitution or transitive property. And, we can come up to angle 2 is equal to angle N plus angle 3 by subtraction property. We subtract both sides by measurement of angle MPN. Then, we come up to angle 2 is equal to angle N plus angle 3. Based on statement number 10, write an inequality statement focusing on angle N. Yes, angle 2 is greater than angle N by property of inequality. And angle LMN is greater than angle N. Now, we already proved that angle LMN is greater than angle N by transitive property. Let us move on in indirect proof of triangle inequality theorem 2. States that if one angle of a triangle is larger, than a second angle, then the side opposite the first angle is longer than the side opposite the second angle. 
So, proving inequality theorem 2. So, given triangle LMN, wherein the measure of angle L is greater than the measure of angle N. Now, let us prove that MN is greater than LM. So, we have a temporary assumption. MN is greater than LM such that MN is equal to LM or MN is it less than LM. So, considering MN is equal to LM, if MN is congruent to LM, then the triangle LMN is an isosceles triangle. So, consequently, angle L is equal to angle N because the basis of or the base angles of an isosceles triangles are congruent. Now, the assumption that MN is equal to LM, is it true or false? It is false because the conclusion that angle L is congruent to angle N contradicts the given that the measure of angle L is greater than the measure of angle N. Now, how about considering MN is less than LM? If MN is less than LM, then the measure of angle L is less than the measure of angle N by triangle inequality theorem number 1. Now, the assumption that MN is less than LM, is it true or false? It is false because the conclusion that the measure of angle L is less than the measure of angle M contradicts in the given that the measure of angle L should be greater than the measure of angle N. Therefore, MN is greater than LM must be true because the assumption that MN is greater than LM does not contradict the known fact that the measure of angle L is greater than the measure of angle N. Now let us move on to the triangle inequality theorem number 3, wherein the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the lengths of the third side. So proving the triangle inequality theorem, given that triangle LMN wherein LM is less than LN and LN is less than MN. Now let us prove that MN plus LN is greater than LM. MN plus LM is greater than LN. And LM plus LN is greater than MN. So notice that since MN is greater than LN, and that is MN is greater than LM, then it is obvious that MN plus LM is greater than LN. And also, MN plus LN is greater than LM. Now, to prove that LM plus LN is greater than MN, let us construct LP as an exterior of LM such that L is between M and P. And LP is congruent to LN and it will form triangle L and P. So from this figure, it will become like this. And now let us prove that LM plus LN is greater than MN. Write a statement to describe LP and LN. So by construction, we can say that LP is congruent to LN. Now, describe the triangle LNP. So triangle LNP, that is an isosceles triangle. So by definition of an isosceles triangle. Now let us describe angle LNP and LPN. So it is safe to say that angle LNP is congruent to angle LPN because the base angles of an isosceles triangles are congruent. So LPN is also congruent to MPN by a reflexive property of equality. And if angle LNP is congruent to LPN, so as stated in statement number 3, and angle LPN is also congruent to angle MPN by the statement in number 4, then it is safe to say that angle LNP is also congruent to angle MPN by transitive property of equality. So from the illustration, the measure of angle MNP is equal to the measure of angle LNP or LNM 
plus the measure of angle L and P. So by angle addition postulate. So using statement number 5 and statement number 6. So angle M and P is equal to angle LMN plus angle MPN. So by substitution property. And we can say that angle M and P is greater than angle MPN by the property of inequality. Then MP is greater than ML by triangle inequality theorem number 2. So from the illustration, what operation involving LM and LP can you write? Yes, LM plus LP that is equal to MP by segment addition postulate. Write now a statement using statement number 10 and statement number 9. Yes, LM plus LP is greater than MN by substitution property of inequality. Now, we already proved that LM plus LN is greater than MN by substitution property of equality. Let us now proceed to exterior angle inequality theorem, wherein it states that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. So let us now prove the triangle inequality theorem. Given the triangle LMN with an exterior angle LNP, we will prove that the measure of angle LNP is greater than the measure of angle MLN. So let us prove that the measure of angle LNP is greater than the measure of angle MLN by constructing the following. So midpoint of Q on LN such that LQ is congruent to LQ and MR through Q such that MQ is congruent to QR. So from that figure, we will construct another figure goes like this. We're in the midpoint Q on LN such that LQ is congruent to NQ and MR through Q such that MQ is congruent to QR. Now let us now try to prove the measure of angle LNP is greater than the measure of angle MLN. So LQ is congruent to NQ and MQ is congruent to QR by construction. So by using vertical angles theorem, we can say that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 because all vertical angles are congruent. And Triangle LQM is congruent to triangle NQR by SAS triangle congruence postulate. So uh, angle MLN is congruent to angle 1 by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent or CPCTC. So angle LNP is congruent to angle 1 plus angle 2 by addition or by angle addition postulate and we can say that angle L and P that is greater than angle 1 by property of inequality. So, angle L and P is also greater than the measure of angle M, L, N by substitute property of equality. Now, we already proved that the measure of angle L and P is greater than the measure of angle M, L, N. Let us now proceed to the next. We're in the hinge theorem or SAS triangle inequality theorem. So it states that if two sides of one triangle are congruent to the two sides of another triangle, but the included angle of the first triangle is greater than the included angle of the second, then the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second. So let us prove that CN is greater than LT. So to prove that, let us first const construct AW such that AW is congruent to AN and YT and AW is between AC and AN and angle CAW that is congruent to angle LYT. So CN is equal to CH by segment addition postulate. 
CN is equal to CH plus WH by substitution property of equality. So in triangle CHW, CH plus WH is greater than CW. So by triangle inequality theorem, wherein it states that the sum of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the third side. And CN is greater than CW. So by substitution property of equality using statement 2 and statement 3. And we already proved that CN is greater than LT by substitution property of equality using statement construction number 1 and statement number 4. Let us move on in converse of the hinge theorem or SSS triangle inequality theorem. If two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of any triangle or another triangle, but the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second, then the included angle of the first triangle is larger than the included angle of the second triangle. So given we have two triangles, triangle ODG and triangle LUV, OD is congruent to LU and DG is congruent to UV, but OG is greater than LV. Now prove that the measure of angle D is greater than the measure of angle U. So angle D is congruent to angle U or angle D is less than angle U. So assumption that angle D is greater than angle U. Now let us consider if angle D is congruent to angle U, it's given that OD is congruent to LU and DG is congruent to UV. So if angle D is congruent to angle U, then triangle ODG is congruent to triangle LUV by SAS triangle postulate. So from the congruence, OG is congruent to LV by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Therefore, the assumption that angle D is congruent to angle U is false because OG is congruent to LV con contradicts the given that OG should be greater than LV. Now, how about consider that the measure of angle D is less than the measure of angle U? If the measure of angle D is less than the measure of angle U, then OG is less than LV by SAS inequality theorem or hinge theorem. Now, the assumption that angle D is less than angle U is false because OG is less than LV contradicts the given that OG is greater than LV. Now, therefore, angle D is greater than angle U must be true. So, the assumption that angle D is greater than angle U is proven to be true. So that's how we approve uh, theorems. Now that's all for quarter for week 3 of grade 8 mathematics. And here is our reference, SD Otarlac Province Mathematics 8 Compendium of Notes. Ayan.